Generator, generator. Caution, caution. Welcome to this training mission in which we will discuss the Harrier's fuel system and then move on to air-to-air -air refueling procedures. We will then rendezvous with the tanker and practice the aerial refueling itself. While AAR is very important for all naval aircraft, it is even more crucial for the Harrier, which not only possess a limited fuel capacity compared to most other attack aircraft, but sometimes need to forego a full fuel load in order to take off from short runways with plenty of ordnance. Therefore, the standard operating procedure would be to get airborne with enough fuel to rendezvous with the tanker, then top off and carry on with the mission. During this sortie, we will cover the following items. General overview of the Harrier fuel system. Functions of the fuel quantity indicator. Bingo set knob and caution lights. We will perform the wing fuel dump and then move on to aerial refueling procedures. Before we take off, let's cover the basics. The Harrier fuel system consists of seven internal tanks, five in the fuselage and two in the wings. The aircraft is also capable of carrying up to four external wing tanks that may be jettisoned. The internal tanks are divided into two feed groups, left and right. The total amount of fuel carried in both feed groups is 7,759 pounds. Fuel is supplied to the engine by four boost pumps and a fuel flow proportioner. The pumps are enclosed in a chamber, which allows the jet to sustain a maximum of 15 seconds of negative G flight. The proportioner equalizes the amount of fuel flowing from left and right feed group to the engine. The fuel proportioner, or fuel prop switch on the left console, controls the work of the proportioner and helps maintain the fuel balance in the aircraft, but will not correct an existing imbalance. To correct an imbalance, you would need to disable the proportioner, shut off the boost pump in the tank group with the lowest quantity of fuel until both groups are equalized, and then reactivate proportioner and boost pumps. In the same quadrant, you will find the fuel dump switches, which are used to empty the external and internal wing tanks according to your needs. We will do that on our way to the tanker to demonstrate the functionality of these systems. Now turn your attention to the lower right portion of the main instrument panel. This is the fuel quantity indicating system. It consists of a fuel quantity indicator with four display windows, a bingo set knob, and the fuel quantity selector switch. Let's start with the windows. The one labeled total, or TOT, shows the amount of usable fuel available in both feed groups according to the position of the fuel quantity selector switch. Consequently, windows labeled left or L or right are show the usable fuel in left or right feed groups for the given switch position. There are seven different positions for the fuel quantity selector switch. Bit is a spring-loaded position that starts a built-in test of the system. You have conducted this test in the cold start tutorial and there is no need to go through it now. In the feed position, the remaining fuel in respective center feed tank is displayed. In the feed position, the remaining fuel in respective center feed tank is displayed. In the next position, internal, the two displays will show you fuel left in internal tanks of the respective feed group. In the wing position, the fuel remaining in the internal wing tanks for both groups will be shown. Inboard displays fuel remaining in the respective inboard external tank. And finally, the outboard position shows fuel remaining in the outboard tank. Bear in mind that for best accuracy while using the displays, you should take into account the state of the aircraft. For instance, if you have the external tanks installed, use the total position to get the most accurate reading. If you don't, then it is better to switch to the internal and so on. Now let's move to the bingo set knob. It has two main functions. The most obvious one is to determine the bingo fuel level. If the quantity falls below the set value, the bingo caution on the left main instrument panel will light up. You can also use the knob to determine the value at which the fuel dump switches will return to the normal position, and the fuel dump will be ceased. For instance, if you decide that you need 3,000 pounds of fuel before landing, set the bingo knob to 3,000, and set both switches to dump position. 
The process will automatically stop once the total fuel level reaches 3,000 pounds. We'll practice that in a moment. Alright, that's it when it comes to the fuel system. Please take off, climb to 15,000 feet MSL and fly towards waypoint 1. Once you're stabilized on course and at the given altitude, we will move on to the next part. Cobble Eddie, Dodge 1-1, one, one. request taxi to runway. Eddie. Dodge one one. Request takeoff. Dodge one one. Cobble Eddie, you are cleared for takeoff with Eddie. Climb three zero zero at USD two nine decimal eight six.
Before we talk about locating the tanker, let's jettison some fuel first and learn how to use the fuel dump switches. First, set the quantity of fuel you want to reach by using the bingo set knob. Let's settle for 4,500 pounds, which should be more than enough to find the tanker and provide ample time to practice the aerial refueling. Now place both the left and right fuel dump switches in the forward or dump position and monitor the fuel quantity. You will see that the amount of fuel on both feed groups will start to go down. As it reaches 4500, the bingo caution light will come up and you will hear the bingo bingo audio message. At this point, both switches will revert to their aft or normal positions. Good, now it's time to talk about finding that tanker. On most of the missions where such support is available, the tankers will fly on a predetermined track that will be included in your briefing. Sometimes, especially in larger theaters, more than one track will be listed for each tanker. In such a scenario, each track will have its specific name and you will be directed to the correct one in order to refuel. In the night attack jet, you have two basic ways of locating the tanker. You will either share some of your 60 available waypoints with its track, in which case it will be enough to fly there and visually acquire the tanker. Or you can use take in to obtain the range and bearing. Let's set it up now. First, press push button 5 to make sure that the take hand is selected. Now press the take hand button on the UFC, type 11 into the scratch pad, and press enter. On the option display unit, press ODU button 4 to change the attribute from X to Y. Now press ODU button 3 to select air to air mode and then button 1 to choose TR, or transmit, receive. You should now see the distance and bearing to the tanker in the top left corner of your EHSD. If you press push button 20 and change the scale, you should also see a small take in symbol. This is the exact position of the tanker in relation to your plane. The tanker is flying at 16,000 feet MSL at 245 knots, in a left-hand racetrack pattern with 50 nautical mile legs. When you are around 10 nautical miles away from the tanker, announce your intent to refuel. Tune to the correct frequency on one of your radios and inform Texaco that you are inbound.
go. Dodge, one, one. Request rejoin. Dodge, one, one. Texaco, proceed to pre-contact at 16,000. I want you to stay at 15,000 feet. Fly to the tanker and position yourself behind and off its left wing. This is a static rendezvous and is the default type for KC 130s. You initially fly an extended echelon left formation with the tanker, 1,000 feet below, with the KC 130 off your 045 and you off its 215 before climbing into the observation position. Standard KC 130 AAR flows are bottom up. You enter the tanker from left and below it, you exit right and above it. On the way, we will quickly talk about the instruments that are at your disposal for air-to-air -air refueling. The retractable probe is located above the left air inlet. It can be extended by pressing the air refueling probe switch. It has three positions. In, the probe is retracted with the tanks pressurized. Out, the probe is extended and pressurization of the tank stops. And press leaves the probe extended but keeps the fuel tanks pressurized, so no refueling is possible. Go ahead and move the switch to the middle or out position. Alright, when the probe is extended you will notice a ready light illuminate on the windshield arch. It will remain on as long as the probe is in the out position and no fuel is being transferred. On both sides of this light are the left and right full advisory lights. These indicate when the left and right feed groups are full. In the clean configuration or with only two fuel tanks installed, they will flash once the corresponding feed group is full. If you have four external tanks, the lights will come on steady when the inboard external tanks are full, and will start flashing when the outboard tanks are full too. If you look at the probe, you will notice a refueling probe light. It will automatically come on if the exterior light's master switch is in the normal position to illuminate the probe and basket, or drogue, at night. Okay, stow the probe for now and join closer with the tanker now that you're visual. You'll want to get into a step down left echelon formation with the tanker, clear of the KC 130's left wing, slightly aft and below it. This is referred to as the observation position. Time to move on to the main part of this sortie, practicing air-to-air -air refueling. The KC-130 is the tanker you will most commonly see supporting Marine Corps operations. The restrictions for this particular airframe are as follows. Speed should be between 210 and 250 knots indicated, altitude above 1500 feet AGL and below 20,000 feet MSL. You can find the call sign, frequency, speed, and altitude of the tanker on your kneeboard. Once established in the left observation position, you need to perform the before plug-in checklist. It consists of the following steps. Make sure that the master arm switch is in the off position. Move the AR switch into out position. Verify that the probe is out and locked and the ready light on the windscreen arch is on. Set the probe light as desired.
Verify that your airspeed is within the limits of 190 to 300 knots indicated. Right now, you should be flying at around 245 knots indicated. Make sure that the angle of attack does not exceed 13 units throughout the refueling process. Set your flaps to cruise mode. Use of auto flaps is prohibited before the contact with the drogue basket. If you wish, you may engage your AFC. This will greatly reduce your workload and help you on approach to the tanker. In order to do so, make sure that you are in level flight and push the automated flight control mode switch to its forward or engage position and then engage the altitude hold switch. Put the visor on your helmet down. This concludes the before plug-in checklist. Note that if you are accompanying a flight of Harriers, you may opt to wait to extend the probe and select cruise flaps until it is your turn to tank. Alright, when you have finished the checklist, use your radio to request pre-contact. If you are close enough, you will hear cleared contact call from the tanker, and the drogue will extend from the left nacelle. Ready, pre-contact. Clear contact. Now climb up and aft to avoid wake turbulence and assume a position 10 to 15 feet in trail of the drogue. Once here, trim the aircraft, rudder, and ailerons. The extended probe significantly increases drag on the left side of the aircraft. You may enter VSTOL HUD master mode in order to help trim the sides of the ball to center with the right rudder. Good. Time for a few tips on refueling techniques. First, remember that in order to do it, you have to stay calm and keep your head cool. If at some point you will be getting nervous, return to pre-contact position, take a few deep breaths and start all over again when you are absolutely calm. Align the refueling probe horizontally and vertically with the basket. What that means in practice is that you will want the heading carrot to point to a spot on the wing roughly between the nacelle in the outer engine of the KC-130. For the vertical alignment, try to line the hose up with the top of the left mirror. Make sure that the amber ready light is lit up on the tanker before attempting an approach. You are now ready for the approach. Let me give you a few pointers before you begin. First of all, remember to fly formation with the tanker and not with the drogue. In fact, I'd advise you not to look at the basket at all. If you do that, especially when it's already on the side of your airplane, you'll almost certainly lose focus and get out of formation. Keep your eyes on the tanker and on that spot on the wing left from the engine, roughly where the KC-130's propeller blades end. Second, make small, smooth inputs with your stick for vertical corrections and your rudder for horizontal corrections. It is an advice to use your ailerons, since this displaces the probe in both the horizontal and vertical planes. Third, remember that the aircraft needs some time to react to your throttle inputs. Bear that in mind when increasing or decreasing the speed. If something goes wrong, do not chase the basket. 
Reduce the throttle and return to your initial position. Align yourself with the tanker and start all over again. When you begin your approach, the closure rate should be around 3 to 5 knots. Once the probe is in the basket, push it forward a few feet. That will give you some reserve and help you stay connected. In reality, fuel will not flow until there is a bend in the hose. You will know when you are taking fuel when the tanker's green fuel transfer light illuminates and the ready light on the canopy bow extinguishes. After connection, be mindful of your speed and position. Try to just keep close formation with the tanker and wait for the refueling to complete. When it is done, two full advisory lights on both sides of the ready light will start flashing, and the crew master will inform you that the transfer is complete. Alright, time to begin the show. Take your time, and make as many attempts as you like. When you feel you've had enough, let me know. Good luck! Good, you made it. Now focus on staying on the drogue. You're taking fuel. Very good. Keep it up. When refueling is complete, report to the tanker that you're satisfied and you will receive clearance to disengage and move to the reform area on the right. To disengage, reduce power and back out in the same relative alignment as on engagement, and at the same 3 to 5 knot separation rate. The probe will disconnect from the drogue when the hose is fully extended. Once disconnected, place the air refueling probe switch to in. The ready and full advisory lights will extinguish when the probe is fully retracted. Establish yourself in a stepped up right echelon with the tanker, or reform position. Recenter the ball with the left rudder trim, set nav hut to master mode, and reset the flaps to auto.
Congratulations, you're done. You can depart through the top of the tanker's altitude block at 17,000 feet MSL, switch frequencies, and RTB to Cavaletti.
180. Dodge, 1-1. One, one. Inbound.
landing gear, landing gear. Good job, welcome back to Kabaletti. This concludes the training mission.